Today, I'm going to show you how to create good color correction completely free in DaVinci Resolve. So the next time you upload your edit on social media, it won't look choppy. Let's get into it. As you can see, I'm on the edit page of DaVinci Resolve, and I have this clip of Iron Man that I'm going to use. To get started, we'll need an adjustment clip. So go to the top left corner and click on the effects icon. Then expand the toolbox, go to effects, and here you'll see the adjustment clip. Drag it to the timeline and place it at the beginning. Now just trim it down according to your clip. The reason we're using an adjustment clip is that it affects every other clip beneath it. So we don't need to apply the same effect repeatedly. This will save us a lot of time. Now switch to media pool by clicking on this icon and drag the adjustment clip into it. This way, whenever we need a new adjustment clip, we can simply drag it from here. For this color correction, we'll be using the color page along with the fusion page to achieve the quality we want. Of course, those with the studio version can do almost everything in the color page, but this is a tutorial for the free version. So let's continue. Simply click on the fusion page icon to open it. We will do some basic adjustments here. If you notice, the clip is quite blurry, so we need to sharpen it a little. Click on the media and node, press shift plus space to open the tools tab and search for sharpen. This one, select it and click on the add button. Now go to the inspector window. The only thing we're going to change is the amount. Double click on the box and type 0.4. Depending on your clip, you may try different values, but keep it within 0.3 to 0.6. It may seem like a small change, but don't worry. These little adjustments will have a great impact later on. And also too much sharpen might increase grain. So change it accordingly. All right. Now let's continue. Click on the sharpen node, press shift plus space, and look for unsharp mask. Press enter to add it. All right, now go to the inspector. The first thing we're going to change is size. So double click on the box and type a value like 20. You'll see the clip has become much clearer, but this is actually too much. So we're going to change its gain to get a more balanced effect. Double click on the box and type 0.5. Good. Now this step is totally optional. You can keep it at the default setting or try different values. If I turn it off and on, you can see the difference in quality. It already looks much better than our normal clip. All right, let's enhance it even further. Now we'll balance the overall look of our clip. With the unsharp mask selected, go to the tool section and add a color corrector node. All right, now go to the inspector and scroll down. Here. We'll adjust a few settings. First, increase the lift slightly by dragging the slider to the right. 0.05 looks good for me. Depending on your clip, this value might be different, but don't increase it too much, as it can wash out the shadows. Next, bring up the gamma a little to brighten the midtones. I'll set it to around 1.06, but adjust it according to your clip. Now let's balance the highlights by decreasing the gain slightly. Around 0.9 works well for me. Finally, increase the contrast to make the details pop. I'll set it to about 1.2. All right, the clip already looks much better, but we're not done yet. We'll also adjust the saturation to make the colors more vibrant. Be careful here. If your clip is already colorful, you might need to decrease the saturation instead. This value depends on the kind of clip you're working with. For my clip, I'll increase it to 1.3. Now let's refine the overall tone of the clip. We'll do this by adjusting the color wheel. Click on the middle of the wheel and drag it slightly to shift the tone. You can choose any tone you want, but I'll go for a slightly bluish look by dragging it here. Remember, Subtle changes work best. Excessive adjustments might alter the colors too drastically. Now if I turn the color corrector node off and on, you can see the difference. This is what we started with, and this is the result after the adjustments. With this, we're done with the work in the fusion page for now. Let's move on to the color page where the real magic will happen. Click on the color page icon to open it. Now stay focused as we work in the color page, otherwise you might ruin your clip. 
I think the clip should be a little brighter. So let's adjust the curve slightly. I'll lift the shadows a little and also will increase the highlights to create a slight C curve. Again, this totally depends on you. If everything looks good to you, there's no need to change it. All right, now follow me carefully. Go to the tool section and click on the RGB mixer. Here, we'll adjust the red output only. First, slightly increase the red. Around 1.09 looks good. You can see that our clip now has a subtle reddish tone. Now leave the green as it is and bring down the blue channel slightly. Around minus 0.12 looks good. Perfect. You can see that it's already looking much better. To check the changes, hover the cursor over the node and click on the node number. This is what we had before, and this is what we have now. It's looking amazing. Now we're going to add some LUTs and make the color correction even better. For those who don't know, LUTs, or lookup tables, are preset color grading profiles that can help transform the look of your footage quickly. They're widely used in editing to achieve a specific cinematic or stylistic feel. Don't worry, every LUT I'm going to use here is available by default in DaVinci Resolve. So let's continue. But first switch to the default color wheels tab by clicking on this icon. Then move the cursor over node again and right click, go to add node, and choose add serial. This will create a new node that contains all the adjustments from the previous node. We'll add the LUT to this new node so that any mistakes can be easily fixed by deleting it without affecting the previous adjustments. Now move to the top left corner and click on the second option, LUTs. Here, you'll see a variety of folders. The one we're going to use is Blackmagic Design. Click to open it. Now scroll down to find something you like. The preset I'll use is this one. Keep an eye on the nodes area to see its name if you want to use the same one as me. But of course, you can choose any LUT of your preference. To apply the LUT, simply drag it to the second node we just created, and that's it. It might take a moment to load depending on your system. You'll notice that this LUT is overly saturated. So we need to adjust it. For that, go to the color wheel section. Here, you'll see SAT for saturation. Double click it and type 30. Good. We have controlled the saturation, but the colors appear a bit dull. Let's balance that by boosting the colors. On the left side, you will see call boost. Double click on it and type 10 or 15, depending on your choice. Well, that looks good. Next, we will brighten up the shadows by adjusting shad. Double click and type 10 there as well. Then we will also adjust the highlights. Double click and type minus 15. This looks much better. Keep in mind these values work for my clip, but you might need to tweak them depending on your footage. Now if we check the before and after, you will notice the changes and it's looking pretty good, but we aren't done yet. We will add another LUT to make it even better. To do so, right click on the second node, go to add node, and click on add serial. Perfect. Now go to the LUT section. The one I'm going to use is in the same folder. So let me look for it. Um, it was somewhere here. Oh, okay. This one. Look at the node area to see the name. Simply drag it to the third node we just created, and that's it. You see, it's looking amazing, but I'll still adjust a few things. Go to the color wheel section and change the saturation to 30. Let's also boost the color to around 20. Now it's looking good, but I want the red color to be more saturated without affecting any other colors. To do this, move your cursor to the web icon called Color Warper and click to open it. Here, you'll see this web form with many points in different color ranges. We just want to adjust the red. Click on the top dot and drag it up and down to increase or decrease the saturation and hue. It affects both. I'll drag it up toward red. Good. Now you'll notice it has a slight yellowish tone. To fix this, click on this dot and drag it up to make it more red as well. That's all. However, the face is looking overly saturated, which I don't like. We can fix this by clicking on the color slice icon. Here, you'll find the skin section. 
Just bring the saturation down to 0.9. Don't decrease it too much, as it might ruin the face structure. Alright, that's all we needed to do here. If I show the before and after, you'll see the changes. It's looking much more polished. Now let's go to the edit page and refine the color correction even further. For this, we'll need a new adjustment clip. Go to the media pool, drag the adjustment clip on top of this, and place it properly. Now click on the fusion page icon to open it. Sometimes, you might see a red cross across your viewer, but don't worry, it's nothing serious. Just move your playhead, and it will fix the issue. The first thing we'll do is create a diffusion effect. For that we need to use Glow Node. Click on the media in Node, press Shift plus Space, and search for Glow. Make sure to use this one. Click to select it, and then press the Add button. Next go to the Inspector. Then adjust the size by dragging the slider to the right. Set it around 80 to 90. Good. Now slightly increase the glow value. At the bottom, you'll see Apply Mode. Change it from Normal to Threshold. You'll notice we now have a diffusion effect, but the background might look too bright. To fix this, adjust the low value by dragging it to the right. Make these adjustments according to your clip. Now it's looking much better. If I show you the before and after, you'll clearly see the difference. Now let's add a vignette. Click on the Glow node and search for Vignette. Press Enter to add it. By default, it looks like this, but we'll make some adjustments. Go to the Inspector and find Operation Mode. Change it from Basic to Advanced. Here, you'll see the Border Shape option, which is set to Oval by default. I'll change it to Rectangle, although most people prefer Oval. Let me know in the comments which one you like more between Oval and Rectangle. Now let's adjust the size a little because it's too dark. Drag the slider to around 0.8. I'll also decrease the anamorphism slightly so that the sides darken as well. Keep it around one. Finally, adjust the softness according to your liking. For me, 0.8 works well. Let's check the result. This is what we had before, and this is what we have now. Good. Let's continue. The next thing we're gonna add is flicker. Click on the Vignette node and search for Flicker Edition. Add it, and if you play it now, you'll see the flickers are white by default. We want them to be black, so go to the Inspector and change the flicker type from Gamma to Vignette. Then adjust the range according to your needs, decrease the speed as required, and increase the softness for a smoother effect. Let's play it back. It's looking good, although the preview might lag a bit due to processing, but you get the idea. Now there's a little problem here. If you notice, when it rotates and the clouds appear at this part, it's actually too bright. This happens because of the vignette. To fix this, you can simply tweak the size of the vignette until it looks balanced, and you're good to go. Next let's head back to the edit page. I'll now show you how to create a haze or flare effect similar to After Effects. Add another adjustment clip on top of everything, and open it in Fusion. To create the haze, we'll use a directional blur. Click on the media in node and search for directional blur. Add it, then go to the inspector and increase the length all the way up. Now select this directional blur node, copy it by pressing Ctrl plus C, and paste it by pressing Ctrl plus V, make a total of three copies. Keep in mind this effect is resource intensive, so proceed cautiously. Now let's add a blur to the effect. Click on the last directional blur node and search for Gaussian blur. Add it, and the default values usually work fine, but you can increase the strength slightly if needed. I will keep it as it is. Now let's head back to the edit page. Make sure the top adjustment clip is selected, then go to the inspector and scroll down to find the composite mode. Change it from normal to add, and now we have the haze effect. It's a bit strong. So we'll lower the opacity to around 15 to 30. If you press D to disable the top adjustment clip, you can see the before and after. It looks much better now. If you want, you can also adjust the opacity of the other adjustment clips. Just select the clip, go to the inspector, and tweak the opacity to control the overall strength. For this one, I'll keep it around 70. Let's preview it. So, 
This is how you create a TikTok style CC in DaVinci Resolve. Of course, this isn't the only style you can create. I just wanted to give you a basic understanding of the tools we typically use for color correction. Hopefully you got the idea. All right, now let me show you how to save these adjustment clips so you can use them in future projects. We're gonna create a power bin to save these effects. For that, go to the top left of the media pool, then click on the bin list icon. By default, power bin is hidden. So to make it visible, click on the three dots on the right and from the menu, select show power bin. DaVinci Resolve has a master bin by default where you can save your adjustment clips, but to stay organized, let's create a new bin. Move your cursor to the empty area under the power bin, right click, and select new bin. Rename it to TikTok CC, then click away to save it. Now open this bin. Go to your timeline and drag the first adjustment clip into this folder. Select it, click once on its name, and rename it to basic adjustments. Click away to save the changes. Then drag the second adjustment clip into the bin and rename it Extra Touch. Finally, drag the third clip and rename it Haze Effect. Let me show you how to export it. Move your cursor over the TikTok CC bin, right click, and select Export Bin. This will open the file manager. Choose a folder where you want to save it, then press Enter to save it. Now I'll delete the bin to demonstrate how to import it back. To import, stay in the media pool. Even if the bin list is closed, you can import it easily, just press Ctrl plus I, locate the folder where you saved your CC. Now find the TikTok CC.DRB file, select it, and press Enter. Once imported, open the folder to check if it's working. I'll select and delete the adjustment clips from the timeline and drag the basic adjustments clip to the timeline. It's working perfectly. If I open the color page, you'll see all the nodes intact with every adjustment we made. And if I go to Fusion, the nodes are there as well. I've added all three clips to the timeline now. Let's preview. Everything is working perfectly. Also, if you want me to create a full TikTok edit, give this video 399 likes. I believe you can do it without any problem. You can write a hymn. Do it.